Hi everyone, today we're going to talk about blending Faber-Castell polychromous pencils. If you want to create realistic drawings, you need to be able to blend and layer your colours confidently. In today's clip, I'm going to show you how to shade a simple gradient and then how to apply that skill to this realistic drawing of eyes. So before we start, it's really important that your pencils are sharp. I have a cream, cinnamon and Venetian red pencil. I'm going to start by adding a really light layer of cream. As you can see, all of my motions are really small circular motions rather than shading straight across. And I'm using the side of my pencil really lightly, starting with my light colours, gradually building up the dark colours and then I will go back in with the light colours moving back across and then I will finish with a lighter colour on top to blend everything together. So you need to work really lightly with your pencil. You've hopefully seen now why it's important that your pencils are sharp and that's because you want to cover as much of the area as possible as you are making your circular marks across the area. So I'm now working across with the cinnamon and then going back in with the Venetian red, working all the time across as lightly as possible with my pencil. And I'm now going back over all of the areas with the cream, trying to bring everything together. Each time that I add a layer on top, I add a little bit more pressure so that I'm giving a light burnish each time as I'm gradually building each of the layers up. It's really important when you're building these layers up that you apply the layers lightly and that you don't go in with too much pressure at first. If you do, you'll damage the tooth of the paper and you won't be able to add any more layers effectively. So for this next gradient, I'm going to be looking to use darker tones, similar to skin tones, and I will be layering salmon, which is also known as dark flesh, caput mortem, and Van Dyke Brown and I will be layering them in the same way as my first gradient and I will be putting the layers on top of each other and then burnishing on top with the darker tones. So before I start today's shading exercise I've got all the pencils out ready and they're all sharp and ready to go. If you would like to draw along with me, then please check out the list of pencils in the description below, as well as all the resources that I've used in today's demonstration. So for this demonstration today, I'm starting by shading some eyes and adding tones to eyes. It happens to be of the musician Harry Styles. <clears throat> and what I've done is I've just cropped down the eyes and put them in the bottom right hand side for your reference so you can follow along with me. If you want to get your own reference image that's perfectly fine but obviously you would need to change the colours and I do have a list of colours that I have used for this particular image but you might want to use your own image that is perfectly fine. So I've started by looking at the iris and the pupil area and I've started to add black and the green, the earth green, and then I'm smoothing on top and burnishing with the cream colour. I'm then going in with burnt sienna, and this is quite sped up, so it would be beneficial for you if you want to watch the slower version that's on my Patreon in real time. But I just want to make you aware that this is all about layering, and you really need to add your layers very slowly and without adding too much pressure initially and then gradually build up and with your final layer when you are happy you can start adding a burnish layer. So I am now at starting to move into the white of the eye and I'm adding a very light layer of light ultramarine and then I am adding the yellowish earth green. As I mentioned earlier there is a full list of all of the pencils that I've used in today's tutorial in the description below and there's also a list of all of the items that I've used in today's tutorial including any blending materials and the paper in the description below. Thank you. 
If you want to take your work to the next level, then why not join me on Patreon? You will have access to a wide variety of exclusive content, including real-time tutorials, exclusive Patreon content, and also one-to-one -one feedback on your work. So why not become a patron to start the next step in your journey to drawing success? So hopefully now you will see that the whites of the eyes are becoming a richer blend rather than just the white of the paper, which sometimes people do believe that the white of the eyes should just be the white of the paper. And that is obviously not the case. If you look at the picture of the reference image below, you will see not only do you have the shades going towards the left of the eye, but you've got a yellowy kind of tone to the eye. I'm now also adding tones around the eye and around the eyelid and also I will be adding a burnishing layer with the Prismacolor Seashell Pink and with Caran Dash Luminance White and Caran Dash Luminance Primavera. So I have a mixture of pencils that I'm using in this demonstration. To show the reflections in the eyes I've decided to use white gel pen. I could use gouache or acrylic but I find that using a gel pen is much more convenient because it's precise and I don't have the mess of using paint. to burnishing skin tones especially lighter skin tones I prefer to use Caran d'Ache Primavera or white or Prismacolor white because I find that I get a lighter skin tone if I were to use Faber Castell white the white is quite transparent so I find that I don't get a light enough skin tone so that is why I'm using these alternative brands of pencils when I am burnishing this final layer So when I added the eyelashes, I looked at the reference image, but it wasn't really clear how long the eyelashes were. So I had to go and added them. The bottom eyelashes were fine, but the top ones were too long. So what I did was I went over those eyelashes with the white, 
Caran d'Ache pencil to almost raise the marks I made and then went over and added some smaller, much shorter eyelashes and that seemed to work well. So for this next stage, I'm going to blend out some marks using Zest It Pencil Blend, which is a brand that I use quite frequently for blending pencils and oil pastels and a blending stump. I like to use the two in conjunction because I find that I get a really smooth effect. So I'm starting by blending from the lightest area first and then moving into the darker shadows blending as I go along and I find that this works really well. I will then wait for this to dry and then when it's dry I will then work on top with lighter pencils. So once the pencil blend is dry I can then start to add further layers on top so that we have more depth to our tones and I will then add another layer of pencil blend, blend everything out with the pencil blend and the blending stump and then continue to add layers until I'm happy with the depth and 3D effect of the pencil layers. If you enjoyed this clip then make sure you check out more clips like this in the colour pencil playlist. Don't forget to look in the description below for details of products used in today's clip and if you have any ideas for content or questions leave a comment below. Finally don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of future content. Also check out my Patreon page for exclusive content including real time content and more.